What's up guys, my name's Brandon and Apple just announced several new accessibility features coming to iOS 19. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at our first official look at some of the upcoming features in iOS 19 before it gets unveiled in its entirety on June 9th. So today, Apple published a press release talking about the powerful accessibility features coming later this year. So this is where we're gonna be taking all this information from. This is directly from Apple. So so the first new feature is going to be head tracking. So Apple says that with head tracking, users will be able to more easily control iPhone and iPad with head movements. And this is very similar to what we saw with iOS 18 with eye tracking. So as you can see from the screenshot here, you're going to be able to have different actions like raise eyebrows, open mouth, smile, stick out tongue, and there are a few others down here as well. And you can have different actions based on what you're doing with your head. So if you open your mouth, it may go to the home screen. If you smile, it may go to the control center and so on. And you can see the description there as well. It says, follow the movement of your head to control a pointer on screen and follows your facial movement to perform action. So that little pointer right there is what your head is going to be controlling. Now here's a very cool one that I think is going to be extremely useful if you use the sound recognition feature. So if you're hard of hearing or you're deaf, now in iOS 19, we're gonna have name recognition. So this is gonna be a different mode inside of sound recognition, which exists in iOS 18. And this is gonna be a new way for users who are deaf or hard of hearing to know when their name is being called. So you can see, this is the type of alert you will receive and it says maybe Sophie. So it says name recognition, recognize a sound that may be Sophie and of course it is based on the sound of that person's voice. And here's another pretty cool feature coming in iOS 19, and this is for sharing accessibility settings. So this is gonna be a way to temporarily share your accessibility settings with another iPhone or iPad. So you can see the notification kind of comes out of the dynamic island here, and it says Chris's iPhone is requesting to share accessibility settings with this device, and you can accept or decline as if it were an airdropped photo. So that is pretty cool. And I would like to see that come for other sections in iOS 19 as well. Now, this one's also going to be pretty big in iOS 19. So this one's called Accessibility Reader. And this is a new system-wide reading mode designed to make text easier to read for users with a wide range of disabilities, such as dyslexia or low vision. And this reading mode can be launched from any application. And it's also built in to the magnifier application. So you can interact with text in the real world as well, such as books or on dining menus. There's also a new Braille experience called Braille Access coming to iOS 19 along with macOS 16 and Vision OS 3. So this is an all new experience that turns your iPhone into a full featured Braille note taker. So it has a built-in app launcher where you can easily open any app by typing with the Braille screen input or a connected Braille device. And with Braille Access, you can quickly take notes in Braille formats and perform calculations using Nemeth Braille a braille code often used in classrooms for math and science. And there's also gonna be a form of live captions that allows you to transcribe conversations in real time directly on braille displays. And here's another interesting one coming in iOS 19, and this one's inside of the App Store, and these are accessibility nutrition labels. So you can see that when you go into an app like CVS Health, for example, and you scroll down, there's gonna be a new accessibility section that shows the supported accessibility features inside of that application. So for example, CVS supports voiceover, captions, reduced motion, and so on. And you can see with other applications as well, like the fitness application, this supports larger text, differentiate without color alone, and several other accessibility features. Now this next one is pretty crazy and seems like it's out of a sci-fi movie, but for users with severe mobility disabilities, iOS, iPadOS, and VisionOS will add a new protocol to support support switch control for brain computer interfaces or BCIs, which is an emerging technology that allows users to control their device without physical movement. So it's basically like using your brain to control your iPhone. And just this morning, Apple announced a partnership with Synchron, who is a company developing a stent-like device that is implanted in a vein atop the brain's motor cortex without requiring open brain surgery. So this device, which is called the Stentrode. It translates brain waves and it allows a user to navigate 
around a screen and select an icon. And this works inside of the switch control accessibility feature, which literally switches control to a new input device like a joystick, or in this case, the brain implant. So iOS 19 is going to add support for that technology in iOS 19. Of course, the technology still has a ways to go, but it's pretty cool what's being added in the code and kind of into the system of iOS and all the other platforms as well. The background sounds feature is getting improved with iOS 19. So this is a feature that I personally use all the time. This will be improved in iOS 19 because Apple says it's going to become easier to personalize this feature with new EQ settings, the option to stop automatically after a period of time. That's something I've been wanting for a long time, a timer. So you can basically turn this off. Like if you have this on for when you're sleeping, it would just be on when you wake up and continue playing. But if you want to be set to a certain time limit that is finally coming with iOS 19. And also Apple says that we're going to have new actions for automations and shortcuts with background sounds. iOS 19 is also going to improve the music haptics feature where you can kind of feel the music via haptics on your iPhone. So this is also going to get more customizable with the option to experience haptics for a whole song or for vocals only. So if you want to only feel the vibrations for the vocals and not the beat, you will now be able to set that in iOS 19. And you'll also get the option to adjust the overall intensity of the taps, textures, and vibrations from the music haptics feature. Now, one of the coolest new accessibility features in iOS 18 was personal voice. This allows you to basically create an AI version of your voice. And that's also going to improve with iOS 19 because that's gonna become faster, easier, and more powerful than ever thanks to improved on-device machine learning and AI to create a smoother, more natural sounding voice in less than a minute using only 10 recorded phrases. And I think the key here is that it's going to take less than a minute to set up because my biggest, you know, drawback, the biggest con for personal voice in iOS 18 is that it took quite a while to set up your voice. You had to constantly, you know, say these phrases. It took a lot more than one minute. It took like 10 minutes. So that will be a nice improvement. And I think more people will use it in iOS 19, especially if it sounds better and less robotic as well. Now, one of the fan favorite features in iOS 18 when it comes to accessibility was under motion and that is show vehicle motion cues. So this has been a game changer for those who get motion sick in cars or anywhere else, because when you turn this mode on and you read on your phone, you will no longer feel sick. And this is also going to be improving with iOS 19 because there's going to be new ways to customize the animated on screen dots on the iPhone, iPad, and on the Mac. So we don't know the specifics about how you're going to be able to customize them, whether that's the color, or what it's going to be, but you will be able to customize that more in iOS 19. And earlier we mentioned eye tracking that will also be improving with iOS 19 because you're now going to have the option to use a switch or dwell to make selections and also keyboard typing when you're using the eye tracking feature or switch control is going to be easier thanks to improvements such as a new keyboard dwell timer, reduced steps while typing with switches and enabling quick path for iPhone and Vision Pro. There are also two improvements coming to CarPlay. So number one, it's going to be large text. So you will be able to enhance the size of the text on your CarPlay device. Also, there's going to be updates to sound recognition in CarPlay. So it says drivers or passengers who are deaf or hard of hearing can now be notified of the sound of a crying baby in addition to sounds outside the car, such as horns and sirens. And the assistive access feature is going to add a new custom Apple TV app with a simplified media player and it's also going to come with an API for developers. Now surprisingly Apple didn't mention much about voiceover or voice control but there are a couple of changes coming to voice control specifically with iOS 19. Number one is a new programming mode in Xcode for software developers with limited mobility and then it's also going to add vocabulary syncing across devices and it's also going to expand language support. Now here's a big one for the Apple Watch and Watch OS 12. So the Apple Apple Watch is finally going to support live listen with real time live captions for users who are deaf or hard of hearing. So this is going to allow your iPhone to act 
act as a remote microphone and it's going to stream that audio to your AirPods, hearing aids, or Beats. And you can view the captions of that audio on your watch while listening and you can use it to control sessions. You can start, stop, or replay from anywhere in the room. And here's a pretty big one for the Mac. So Mac OS 16 is going to include a new magnifier. So this is going to make the physical world more accessible for users with low vision. And Apple made a whole ad on the new magnifier for Mac OS 16. So they are expecting it to be quite popular, it seems. And also vehicle motion cues are coming to the Mac with Mac OS 16. So this, of course, like I mentioned earlier, will help reduce motion sickness when riding in a moving vehicle. And it's going to come with new ways to customize as well, just like we talked about on the iPhone and iPad. And here is a very cool one for the Apple Vision Pro. So for users who are blind or have low vision, Vision OS 3 is getting major upgrades. So it's going to use the Apple Vision Pro's advanced camera system to have Zoom now let you magnify everything around you. So you'll be able to look around and kind of just zoom in in real life. Now, Apple also announced two features that you can use today. And those are two new shortcuts that Apple created themselves. So the first one is called hold that thought. And this one I think is going to be very handy for a lot of people. So basically interruptions can cause you to forget tasks and affect, you know, productivity. It's going to get you distracted, especially if you're somebody who has ADHD or as Apple says, neurodivergent minds. This shortcut though is going to allow you to capture your current task and recall it later when you're ready to refocus. So let me show you how it works. I have it right here inside of my shortcuts application. When I tap on that, take a look at what it says. So it says, first off, either capture or recall. So if I want to capture what I'm doing, I would just press capture. If I want to recall something I was doing earlier, but I forgot, I would press recall. So I'm going to go to capture and it says move to the screen you want to capture with the screenshots. This will happen automatically in five Five seconds after you tap on OK. So we're going to go to OK. Let's just say we want to go into, we'll just go into Safari here and it's going to take a screenshot automatically for us. And as you can see right there, now it's going to say, what are you doing? So I'm going to say researching for video. We'll tap on done. And it says, what were you about to do? And I'll say, call my friend James Bax. We'll tap on done. So you can see that nothing visually happened there, but in the back end, it added that thought to my notes. So it shows hold that thought and it shows exactly what I typed in right there. It also shows what I had saved to the clipboard at the moment. So if I had anything copied to the clipboard, it would paste that in right there under clipboard contents. And it also shows the screenshots that it automatically took after those five seconds. So that is amazing. It's super cool. You could also access this in other ways. You don't have to go into the shortcuts application to do that. But let me show you the other way to do this. So if we go to recall, you can see it just takes us straight to that note. I think this will be a very useful shortcut to have added to the action button. So if you want to quickly trigger that, you could just press it on the action button and you can choose it right there. Or of course you can have this in the control center or anywhere else on your iPhone. But that's a really useful shortcut that Apple launched. They also launched this other one right here. So this one's called Apple Vision Pro Accessibility Assistant. So this one asks you about your specific needs like hearing, vision, mobility, and it creates a note with a built-in feature suggestion and a direct link to Apple support articles. So if I go to vision, for example, and I'll just say sensitivity to light, you can see, would you like to specify more conditions? I'll just go to finished for now. And it will add that to my notes. As you can see right there, all that happens automatically through this shortcut. Pretty awesome. Also in kind of related news, because it does somewhat relate to accessibility, Apple today partnered with Universal Music Group, UMG, to announce Sound Therapy. So these are a collection of three different playlists on Apple Music. So we have one for focus, one for relax, and one for sleep. So Apple says that these songs have been enhanced with auditory beats or colored noise to help encourage specific brain responses. So if you want to check these playlists out, I've actually been listening to these for a little while now and they are excellent. They're better than I thought they would be. I was just testing them just to hear what it sounded like, but I was surprised at how good these playlists are, especially for their specific category, like sleep, you know, relaxing and focusing. So check those out. They'll be linked down below. So that is a first look at some of the new features coming in iOS 19, along with watchOS 12, macOS 16 and vision OS three. So keep in mind, there are going to be a lot more features in iOS 19. These are just specific to accessibility. So of course, stay tuned. We will be covering all those features here 
on the channel in the future. But let me know what you guys think about these accessibility features. I think this is actually a more loaded, you know, drop from Apple than last year with iOS 18. So I'm pretty excited to see how these accessibility features turn out. I think that we're seeing a lot of improvements with accessibility thanks to AI and Apple's improved machine learning. But let me know your thoughts down there in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on those future iOS 19 videos. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.